Hi, and welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of Written in Starlight by Isabel Ibanez. This is a sequel to her previous book, Woven in Moonlight. I read Woven in Moonlight almost exactly one year ago, and Written in Starlight picks up pretty much exactly where that book left off. So if you haven't read the first book in the series, I advise that you stop this review now because there will be spoilers. At the end of Woven in Moonlight, Catalina, who is supposed to be the Condesa, has been exiled to the jungle. She won't accept the new Yaksan queen, so instead of being punished by death, she's punished by living out the rest of her life in the jungle. And considering how dangerous the jungle is, that might not be a very long life at this point. To put it mildly, Catalina is very ill-equipped for this jungle. She doesn't know how to defend herself against the hungry dive wires. She doesn't know which plants are safe to touch and which ones are not safe to touch, which she can eat and which she cannot eat. She doesn't know how to set up her hammock to sleep at night. She really is doomed from the start. Miraculously, she does survive that first night, and luckily for her, she stumbles across a man named Manuel, who she hasn't seen in three years. Like Catalina, he's also part of the Illustrians. It looks like Illustrians, although I assume it's a Spanish pronunciation. So I'll just go with that for the rest of the video. They have some history, they are friends, and she had a crush on him, but in the last three years, he's been out looking for allies for the Illustrians. Now that they're together in the jungle, he takes it upon himself to be her guard and protector. Together, they have to brave all kinds of dangers mudslides and caimanes and flesh-eating butterflies and magical people and dark magic and people who are following them. There's a lot of dangers that they have to face and this book is just filled with action throughout the whole thing. It's also set almost entirely outdoors. At least the first 200 pages are completely set in the jungle with these characters braving the animals and the weather and sleeping in caves and it's just very outdoorsy and very adventurous and exciting. Much more so than most books I read. I don't really read action -y books that much. I also don't really watch action movies. But even so, even though it's not really a genre I am normally drawn to, I actually really enjoyed it here. I also really like the characters here. Catalina is supposed to be the Condesa, which is Countess in Spanish. And she's young, she's only 18, and she's never really had a chance to grow up and, and defend for herself and to develop certain skills that I think she really needs if she's going to be a Condesa. She's kind and she's caring and she's brave, but she's also naive and she's also a little bit vengeful. And I think she really lacks a lot of knowledge of her past, her people's pasts, and the different peoples around her and their religions. Not to mention that she cannot defend herself in the jungle at all. Throughout this book, Catalina has a lot of growth to do. And I really do like that as the story progresses, you, you do start to see her evolving and changing and not just becoming a better person, but also kind of changing her outlook on what kind of future she wants and whether she actually would be a good Condesa and whether she even wants to be a Condesa at this point. She also has to learn how to harness her magic. She's supposed to be able to read the stars and she's not, and she's never really been able to do that so far in her life. Later, when she does belatedly start to hone this skill, it really proves to be helpful for her and the people that she and Manuel end up meeting. I also like Catalina's relationship with Jimena. Jimena was her best friend, but at this point, Catalina feels completely betrayed by her. And although we don't really see almost any interaction between the two in this book, I do like the underlying element of friendship and understanding why Jimena made the choices that she made before, what, what she sees in Catalina, and, and how well these two friends really know each other. And of course, there's also the relationship between Catalina and Manuel. Now Catalina, she's pretty forward and she definitely does have romantic interests in Manuel and she can't get over some shared history that they have from a few years ago. But Manuel, he definitely is a more stoic type and he, he does not believe in mixing work and pleasure at all. <laughs> he doesn't think he has any right to pursue a friendship, let alone a romantic relationship with Catalina. And he really prefers to uh, to keep those boundaries very firm between them. But of course, Catalina is not having it, and she she really wants him to be honest with her and to open up and to see what kind of relationship they could have besides her being his sovereign and him being her protector. As with the previous book, Woven in Moonlight, I love how Written in Starlight really infuses the book with Bolivian history and folklore. It's set in a fantasy version of Bolivia, and I like the different peoples that we get to know during these books. Catalina, Manuel, and Jimena, they're all from the Eustrians, as I said. In the previous book, we also got to know the Yaksans. And in this book, we get to know a third group, which is the Iyari. 
Now these are made up groups of people, although I do assume that at least one of them is based on real groups of people that live in or around the Andes. For example, the Incas. You can see hints of this in the way they dress, but also in the languages speak. The, the Iyari, and I think the Yaxans as well, it seems that their first language was actually Quechua, which is a native language in South America. And in contrast, I think the Iustrians, their language is primarily Spanish, which in real life would have been brought over by the, the European conquerors. So that kind of information does color my interpretation of these different groups of people. One thing I like is how, as Catalina gets to know the, the other groups of people, the Yaxans and the Yari, and as she gets to know their religions and how they worship the sun, the earth, and the moon, she's learning their history, she's learning what these people are actually like, and learning that maybe they don't have to be her enemies. Maybe she isn't quite so entitled to the role of Condesa as she thinks she is. I can't speak for the author, I don't know what her intentions were with the book, but the way I interpret it, it's kind of giving more respect and power to these groups of people who were in South America before the Europeans got there. I've mentioned before in various reviews and videos that my husband is Peruvian and I really like to see different stories set in South America and I like how this one infuses so much South American culture and includes the Quechua language and I just think it's really interesting to get to know through this fantasy version of everything. Now I've personally never been to the jungles in South America I really want to go to the Amazon, but I have not been there yet. So I really enjoyed reading this book. I got to live vicariously through these characters and get to see not only the dangers of the jungle, I went to the jaguars and there's venomous frogs and just so many dangers. But one thing that Catalina often comes back to is the beauty that she sees in the jungle. It's dangerous, yes, but it's also so beautiful and kind of enchanting in its own way. You can see the beauty in it, in the different flora and fauna and it kind of renewed my my love of nature and the planet and I'm just I just found it really enjoyable to read this book with that perspective and with that setting very outdoorsy setting so written in starlight is an action-packed and magical book but it also infuses so much Bolivian culture and history and emotional growth and relationship growth and I I just really enjoyed the whole thing I think I liked it even more than the previous book in the end I gave it four and a half stars so I'm really enjoying Isabel Ibanez's books. These are the only two she has out so far, but I'm really excited for Together We Burn, which comes out in May 2022. Pretty close to my birthday, actually. And that one's set in a fantasy version of Spain. I'll also be reading an upcoming anthology she's part of called Reclaim the Stars, edited by Zoraida Cordova, who I've also read before. So stay tuned for my reviews of both of those books in the new year. So I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I'll be putting out more book review videos like this one at least once or twice every week, and very soon I'm going to be putting out additional content that you won't want to miss. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!